Hello ladies, my name is Brianna Rudder and in this tutorial we are going to talk all about natural hair types. That means we are going to explore curl patterns, hair density, hair texture, and hair porosity. So I'm going to need y'all to take some notes because this video is going to be a good one. And before we get started, I know some of you are going to want to know what's going on with this hairstyle, what it is, and have I done a tutorial on it? Yes, and all you got to do is check out any information and links provided down below in the description. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So the first thing we're going to do is jump into curl patterns. Now there are plenty of curl patterns ranging from type 1 all the way to type 4C. But in this video specifically, I want to focus on type 4 hair because I know a lot of my viewers love to know or hear more explanations about how they can actually define their hair. Curl patterns range from type 1, which is literally bone straight hair naturally, all the way to type 4C, which is extremely tight coily hair that resembles to the naked eye a fro-like texture. 4A curl pattern is a medium curl and it does not break as easily. And the reason why is because the hair curl of this type is loose. So that means that it's independently spiraling or curling away from other neighboring curls. So you're not gonna see a lot of interlocking between the curls, but of course there's always exceptions. And because the curls are not as tight and they're loose and they don't interlock as frequently, this significantly reduces its natural breakage. So this hair type is not gonna be the type of hair that breaks very often or very easily, which is a good thing when it comes to length retention. Length retention means being able to obtain longer lengths without your hair receding in length because of breakage. A big negative to type 4A hair is that it's very difficult to keep styles lasting longer than two days. Now there are exceptions out there, so I wanna be clear throughout this video that everyone is not gonna be specifically every detail that I say. But the descriptions that I'm giving for the hair types will fit the majority of viewers who are watching. So when it comes to type 4A hair, it's very difficult to maintain a style for a very long time, usually no longer than two days because the hair is very soft and it has more of an elongated curl in nature. So it's difficult to have lasting power with your hairstyles. When it comes to hair shrinkage with 4A hair, hair shrinkage means your hair's ability to actually shrink in size when wet. So with 4A hair, your hair shrinkage is actually very close to your real length when straightened out. So just as an example, just imagine having 20 inch long hair. Now, if you're type 4A hair, your hair to the naked eye when wet will look about 18 to 16 inches on average. So this is a big plus for women that like to show off their natural length when they have type 4 hair, especially especially 4A hair because 4A hair doesn't shrink as much as the other hair types, which would be 4B and 4C. When it comes to 4A hair, a lot of women say it's very easy to keep their hair moisturized by just using a little bit of light oil, such as a few drops, or using just a small pump of some leave-in hair conditioner to put on their hair to give them lasting moisturizing effects with their style. So now we're gonna talk about 4B hair. And when it comes to 4B hair, these curls are tighter than 4A curls. 4A curls are a little looser in texture and the diameter is usually a little wider. So that means it gives you more of a clear distinction between the two. With 4B hair, it resembles tight curls, not extremely tight coils, which are a lot smaller in diameter, not coils, curls, which are wider in diameter, but not as wide as 4A curls. So when you actually compare 4A curls to 4B curls, there's a clear distinction being that the 4A curls are looser and wider in diameter and 4B curls are tighter and a little bit more narrow in diameter. 4B hair has a tendency at times to have moderate breakage when you are neglecting your hair. So this can come with minimal neglect or a lot of neglect, meaning you're not properly washing and conditioning and detangling your hair on a consistent basis. Now a big plus with those who have 4B hair is that they can actually hold a style for a couple of days without having the issue of their curls reverting back too soon. So it's usually about the mark of half a week to a week where those with 4B hair are ready to try a new style again anyway. One pro and con when it comes to having 4B hair is that a lot of women say that with their shrinkage, their hair actually looks 50% of their true length. 
So let's take this for example, having straight 20 inch hair. For those who have 4B hair, say that their hair actually shrinks up to about 50%, which means that to the naked eye, their hair will look 10 inches long, when in reality, their hair is 20 inches long. And the reason why I say that's a pro and a con is because a lot of those with 4B hair can actually get away with having shorter lengths and actually experimenting with different types of cuts and styles that actually hide the true length of their hair. But for those who always like to have their hair stretched out or elongated, that may say that that's a big con because they wouldn't want to have asthma shrinkage. But the shrinkage of 4B hair is nothing compared to 4C hair. So when it comes to 4C hair, this hair looks like a fro to the naked eye. But in reality, if we take a closer look, you will see very tight, small coils or springs throughout your hair if you have 4C hair. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference between a coil and a curl? It's all about the diameter of the size of the curl. When the curl is a lot wider and easier to see to the naked eye, this is considered a curl. When the diameter of your coil is very small and hard to see with the naked eye, unless you're very close, then that's a coil. So that's one of the biggest differences between knowing if you're actually 4B or 4C. So when it comes to 4C hair, this hair is chronically known to break. And I've had my own experiences with 4C hair because I naturally have 4C hair. Now my hair is relaxed and of course I'm wearing a crochet style right now so you can't see my hair but throughout my tutorials and especially if you go back in time you will see how my hair looked in its natural state and with my 4C hair every single hair on my head literally looked like little tiny springs but to the naked eye it looked just like a regular froed out style. When it comes to 4C hair it breaks so easily because the curls are so tight and small and they wind around each other all the time. Even when you detangle 4C hair, literally, just wait a half an hour and go back through again on dry hair and you will realize that the hair is as if it never got detangled. A lot of women can't stand this about their hair, but a lot of women love this about their hair because guess what? 4C hair holds the best styles for the longest period of time. This is compared to 4A, 4B hair because it ain't got nothing on the holding power of 4C hair because 4C hair defies gravity. One big negative to 4C hair is that it's very difficult to keep it moisturized for longer periods of time, being that this hair is usually drier and more coarser or kinkier in nature. This means that you want to use heavier oils on your hair or hair butters to maintain an elasticity to your hair. Elasticity is how stretchy your hair feels when manipulating it. You want it to have a healthy level of elasticity so that your hair does not break as easily. Being that 4C hair tends to break a lot easier than other hair types, you want to make sure you're always keeping 4C hair moisturized so that you're helping your hair to grow to longer lengths. And honey, when it comes to shrinkage, a lot of women with 4C hair, including myself in the past experiences I've had with my hair, is that Literally only 25% of your length shows in your hair unless you straighten it. So let's consider this for example. If you got 4C hair and it's 20 inches long, but it reverts back to its curly estate, your hair will literally look five inches long, typically. Now ain't that a rip off? So now that you understand type 4A hair, type 4B hair, and type 4C hair, I need you to leave a comment down below letting me know what's your hair type. And if you have multiple hair types, let me know as well. Because no one head only has one type of curl pattern. Some of you may have a mix of 4A, 4B, 4A, 4C, 4B, 4C, or a combination of all three. So now that we've discussed curl patterns, we're gonna talk about hair densities, hair textures, and hair porosity. When it comes to hair density, there's two types of hair densities that most people have, and this is going to be thick hair and thin hair. Hair density is a visual representation of how easy it is to see your scalp through your hair. So for those of you who have thinner hair on the edges of your hairline or around the perimeter of your head, this means that you have thin density hair around your hairline. But 
for most women or for most people, the further back you go along the scalp by looking more further back on the head, you notice that the hair looks thicker. This means that the density is a lot more, meaning there's more follicles on the scalp closer together, making it harder to see your scalp through your hair, unless you actually separate your hair or part your hair or smooth your hair back. But just looking at your hair without touching it, if you can see very easily through your head, around your head for the most part, you have thick in here but if it's very difficult to see through your scalp no matter where you look unless you're only looking very close to your hairline then this means you have thick density hair for those of you who have to know for sure what is my hair density all you gotta do is the hair tie test so how do you do the hair tie test you literally get an elastic hair tie and you're going to put your hair in a ponytail so what does this tell you if you can wrap the ponytail holder around your hair at least three times, you have thin hair. But if you cannot, for the life of you, wrap a regular hair tie around your ponytail for at least three times, then you, my friend, have thick density hair. Comment down below what's your hair density. Is it thick, is it thin, or is it a combination of both? So now we're gonna talk about hair texture. And hair texture usually falls in two categories, coarse and fine. Coarse hair texture is how your hair feels when you're running your fingers through your hair. Can you literally feel each strand when you're actually touching your hair? If you can and if your strands feel very thick and full, this means that you have coarse textured hair. When it comes to coarse hair texture, this hair texture usually feels dry to touch even right after you've moisturized your hair and your hair has absorbed the moisture. You will still, when running your fingers through, feel that it has a slight dryness to it because coarse hair just is easier to feel through your fingers. When it comes to fine textured hair, this hair is softer to touch than coarse hair. And when you actually feel fine hair, it's very difficult to count how many strands of hair are in between your fingers without looking at it because the strands of fine hair is actually very small in diameter diameter compared to coarse hair strands are a lot thicker in diameter making it easier to feel and touch and know how many strands are in your hair when rubbing it. Also one thing is that fine textured hair can be a little deceiving because to the touch it will actually feel like it's slightly moisturized even when it's dry and that's because fine textured hair is usually a lot softer to feel and because there's a lot more strands taking up a smaller amount of space it's very difficult to truly feel whether or not your hair is dry unless you know your hair and you always have issues with dryness. Those are the only times you can usually tell. When it comes to hair densities and hair textures there are only four combinations and most people will predominantly fall under one of them. So I'm gonna list them so that you can get an idea of which one you mostly fit in. Thick fine hair, thick coarse hair, thin coarse hair, thin fine hair. So what I want you to do is let us know down below in the comments, what combination of hair density and texture do you fall under and what products work for you so that you can help out the beauty community. Low porosity is hair that actually takes a lot longer to fully feel saturated with water. And it's very common for you to actually wash your hair for a total of five minutes before you fully feel that all of your strands are saturated with water. When it comes to drying low porosity hair, it takes forever usually about an hour or longer. So if you, my friend, have low porosity hair, I need you to please invest in a hooded dryer or a blow dryer because it can take a lot longer for your hair to dry naturally without any product. And then when you add oil on top of low porosity hair, it can take hours, even overnight to properly dry. Products that work great for low porosity hair are usually heavier butters or creams, such as using shea butter or cocoa butter. Even using more of a lighter but heavier oil like olive oil on the hair can help the hair to maintain moisture for longer periods of time, being that it's very difficult for water to go in and out of the hair shaft because the hair has low porosity. Medium porosity hair, on the other hand, is somewhere in the middle between the abilities of low porosity hair and high porosity hair. 
hair. Medium porosity hair is the perfect balance of being able to wet your hair in literally under a couple of minutes when washing or conditioning and to be able to air dry your hair less than an hour. So it has the best of both because it's easy for water to go in and out of the hair shaft as well as chemicals if you're coloring your hair, but it doesn't dry so fast like high porosity hair. With medium porosity hair, you usually have the choices to actually lock in moisture, which is water, by using light oils or a mix of heavier creams and butters on the hair, such as shea butter, cocoa butter, you can even use coconut oil, argan oil, jojoba oil on the hair as well to help you to maintain a moisture balance. So you want to experiment with different products that have these as their base oil ingredients to see which ones work for you. When it comes to high porosity hair, on the other hand, this hair tends to actually dry very quickly and get wet very quickly. Usually it can actually get saturated wet when running your hair on the water in less than a minute. But it also dries just as fast, meaning that you usually will see that without any product in your hair, your hair can literally dry super quick in like 30 minutes. But this is a big con because if your hair can dry very quickly, you actually lose moisture all the time. A lot of women who have high porosity hair always complain that their hair feels so dry and it's hard to keep moisture in it. But those who also usually have high porosity hair usually notice that their hair is thinner and finer, meaning that it's very difficult to put heavy products on their hair. So you wanna make sure that you're using light oils such as coconut oil, jojoba oil to help you to actually seal in moisture. Another thing you can do is use humectants on your hair. Humectants are ingredients inside of products that actually help to draw moisture from your environment. And a great humectant that you can use on your hair is aloe vera gel, or you can purchase some aloe vera juice and mix that in your products to give you more staying power with your moisture when actually adding a moisturizer to your hair. Now, if you are sick of playing the guessing game when it comes to your hair porosity, we gonna put all that to rest. The only thing you gotta do to know once and for all if you have low, medium, or high porosity hair is to do the water test. The water test is you just getting a regular cup of water, making sure it's at room temperature. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a couple of strands of your hair that's actually product free. So it's actually freshly washed, dried hair that doesn't have any product on it. And the easy way to get this hair is not to snip your hair, it's to actually wash your hair in the sink, use a hair catcher, and catch your freshly washed hair that naturally came off from washing it. You're gonna let it dry, and this is gonna be your sample to do your water test. So you're gonna take a couple of strands of this freshly washed, air dried hair with no product, and you're going to put a few drops in your cup of water. And you're only going to do this for five minutes because you can easily see where your hair falls along the cup. If the hair stays at the top of the cup after five minutes, you have low porosity hair, meaning it's very difficult for your hair to absorb water. If after five minutes, the hair starts to sink to the middle of the cup, this means you have medium porosity hair. And if you notice after five minutes, your hair just straight up falls to the bottom of the cup, this means you have high porosity hair, which means that your hair absorbs water very fast. So let me know what's your hair porosity. I have a mix of medium to low porosity hair. Hair. It takes forever for me to get my hair wet and it takes me forever for my hair to naturally dry without product. And even when I add product on it, it takes even longer. So let me know what's your hair porosity and what do you like or dislike about it and how do you make your porosity work in your favor? Let us know down below in the comments. So ladies, if y'all enjoyed this video and want me to do more videos like this on different hair topics, all you gotta do is let me know down below. We talked about curl patterns specifically with type four and we also talked about hair textures, hair density and hair porosity. So that means I need y'all to give me a profile down below of your hair and tell me its pros and cons and what products work for you because if you tell us the techniques and products that work for you then we can help out the entire beauty community have lustrous beautiful hair by the way this ain't my hair but you know I'm gonna act like it in this moment you know when I take a closer look at it, it look like it could be uh um 2c um not three but we gonna pretend okay so if y'all enjoyed this tutorial, let me know what more you want to see and I'll check y'all in my next one. Bye bye.